Oh, God. Oh, man. If only there was a better way of enjoying gardening without all the sweat, dirt, and hard work. Oh, yeah. Video games. Harvestella is created by Square Enix, the same people that brought us Final Fantasy, Mario RPG, and the legendary Space Invaders. They now join their latest craze that is farming games with this charming little entry. In this game, you'll find yourself farming, of course, diving into many bizarre storylines, conversing with unicorns, and in Square Enix fashion, you'll be battling giant mutant monster things. How could they possibly screw this up? Now I was taught in school, if you're going to give constructive criticism, you should always start with something positive first before saying the negative. However, if this is your first video with me, I assure you I am not an angry and negative person. At the end of this deep, dark tunnel of a review, there is a light, but I digress. With a name like Harvestella, you would think that there would be a bigger emphasis on farming, but no. You're given this plot of land connected to this shed. Wait, hold on. Yeah, he definitely called this a shed. What kind of backwards world is this where they call a magnificent house like this a shed? I'll slum in one of their sheds any day. I think something was actually lost in translation. Anyway, you got this plot of land. It gets much bigger later on in the game. Pretty standard for a farming game. They also add a water and cave zone where you can plant seeds without having to till the ground nor water the plants. Okay, that's decent. You also get chickens and goats, sorry, sorry, clough fowls and woolums. Also pretty standard. So what's wrong, Chris? Oh, I'll tell ya. There's no point to any of it. The only purpose of growing food is to cook meals with it. The meals basically act as your potions in the game. The end. The only other thing you can do with the food is to give it to these vendors in the game that exchange specific meals for minor rewards. And the worst part about this is they give you no way in game of tracking which vendor needs what. The moment you need to take ink and paper into the mix, I'm out. Don't even get me started on the stupid fish monster who wants to collect all the rare fish again for minor rewards. There's no festivals to submit your food to. No festivals at all actually. You can use the food to make grain for your animals to eat in your food processors, but can you bring your animals out to pasture? No. The animals stay put. You can't groom them, you can't breed them. All they're good for is producing eggs and milk, which, between that and the ingredients you can forage from your property every day, you pretty much have enough food and drink to heal you throughout the entire game. You can ignore the farming completely if you wanted to. And, if you do want to go through the chore of farming, you get punished by having to listen to these fairies say the same line over... Bam! 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 And over... I did this! <laughs> and over again! Hello, little crappies! Hello, little crappies! These stupid fairies are the only unique part of the game compared to other farming games. And they are the worst part. They're supposed to help you out on the farm. They do this mainly by offering you helpful unlocks through this book they give you that has a bunch of mini missions which you complete primarily by doing things in the game like unlocking shortcuts, doing side quests, and growing an abundance of different crops. Some of these unlocks are great, like the increased amount of crops you can harvest in a single swipe, or the peaceful way you can walk through your garden while watering the plants. This is the only fairy that isn't annoying. The worst one is the freaking seed sowing fairy. Sowing seeds is so painfully slow and tedious, it also takes the longest time to unlock the upgrade for. I didn't get it until near the end of the game, and even the upgrade isn't that much better. But I guess it's just completely impossible to program an easier way to plant seeds. Best to not even bother. In the other farming games, you could give the food to villagers to grow a bond with them, and you would have to learn their favorite foods to grow friendship quicker with them. But even if you could do that in this game, which you can't, you can't tell the villagers apart. They all look the exact same, many with only slight variations to their hair or outfit. It takes all of the charm out of getting to know the villages and their inhabitants. You'll never be able to remember if you met them or not. The only unique looking people are yourself and anyone connected directly to yours or your party members' stories. Now you might be saying to yourself, Chris, 
Maybe they're trying to do something different with this game. Something to set themselves apart from other farming games. If that were the case, I see nothing other than the fairies that sets them apart. And all the fairies do is replace the mechanic of upgrading tools in the other games. This game adds nothing new. It does the opposite. It has the same things you can do in other farming games, but less. You can't even grow a flower in your farm. Okay, Chris. Okay. Maybe this isn't supposed to be considered a farming game. All right, let's go with that. Ignoring that it starts you on a farm, goes through the four seasons, which don't look much different than each other besides winter, they don't even change the music to switch the vibe, and ignoring the fact that it's called Harvest Ella, let's not consider it a farming game. So what else could it be? A story-based RPG, similar to what you might expect from the makers of Final Fantasy? And if you made it this far in the video, this is where I get a bit less irritated. As far as the other elements in this game are concerned, it's actually not too bad of a game. Combat isn't horrible, it's not great, but it's not horrible. You'll basically be mashing the A button throughout most of this game. There's no real strategy to the game, you can't dodge or block, so your only real goal is to kill the enemies faster than they can kill you. I think they removed blocking and dodging in order to make the food in this game more important because like I mentioned, these will be your potions throughout the game. If you can avoid getting hit, it would make the farming even more pointless than it already is. Oops, my bad. <laughs> I went to that dark place again. Happy thoughts. You'll get different classes throughout the game. I wouldn't say one is more viable than the other. I would say though, decide what you want to be early on and just stick with it. You can only upgrade the classes or as they call them, jobs if you're using that job. I personally went with the sword and the spear fighting classes and then the mage class. The two fighting classes have decent area of effect spells and the mage is handy because of the range. Range is one of the only ways to avoid damage in the game, which is super handy especially in some areas. As you unlock party members, you will also unlock their class for your own personal use. Your party is super interchangeable though. I didn't find one party member much better than another. They all just do basic attacks, no magic, no healing. Their ultimates can only really be performed on bosses, but sometimes can only be used once or twice before the boss dies anyway. So don't stress too much over which one to go with. Your party members level with you and get small bonuses by doing their character specific quest lines. So if you don't plan on doing the side quests, I would suggest just doing the quest of the two specific party members you plan on sticking with. You'll find that you will level in this game very quickly with minimal grinding. That combined with upgrading your weapon and the simple combat system, it's not a very hard game. So finally we get to the story, and don't worry I won't be giving any spoilers because as it turns out, the story is actually pretty good. Unlike my microphone that decided to give up on me causing me to re-record all these last three shots because it's now dark outside at the time of this editing, so anyway, let's go on with the story. The game starts out with you passed out on the ground during a monthly event called Quietus. A basic explanation of the event is that during Quietus there are particles in the air that will kill anyone that breathes it in. So everyone hides inside their house when it's happening. This mysterious girl appears and shields you from the particles and sets you on your path to basically find out what Quietus is and wants you to figure out how to stop it. You'll meet a bunch of colorful characters along the way, each with their own story and their own reasons to join you on your quest to save the world. The main quest line itself is super interesting. It has a bunch of bizarre twists and turns that will pull you in and make you want to find out what happens next. The character specific storylines are also very interesting and have a lot of connections to the main story. Some even give you clues to where the story is going and elaborate on some of the elements uncovered during your primary quest. I highly recommend if you do get this game to do all the side stories and if you only do a few, make sure you do Heinz. The ending will get your mind racing. The non-character specific side stories are charming in their own right. They don't really add to the main story, they are kind of their own little unrelated short stories. They are the sort of stories you would expect from a Saturday morning show like Pokemon or the Power Rangers. Not a lot of substance but each with a wholesome moral at the end. Like the power of friendship and using words instead of holding things in. Not all stories have happy endings. Just ask Scott the suicidal robot. Now with all that said and done, could I recommend the game? That's a tough one, because when I bought the game it was a fully priced $80 game and at that price point I couldn't with a clear conscience recommend buying this game. However, now that it has dropped in price, I think there is an audience for this game. Sure, the farming could be better and the combat can be improved, but it's not painful to play. 
It can be quite peaceful and calming. If you can tune out the annoying fairies, it can be downright relaxing. I think the main audience, however, is someone that's new to the RPG genre and just wants to dip their toe into an easy game, but is ready to dive into a good long story. Emphasis on the long part, because 90% of the time you'll be reading dialogue with very little gameplay. Lots and lots of reading. They give you dialogue choices in between, but it has little to no impact on the story. So to summarize, not the best game, feels a bit rushed, but altogether a pretty good story. So go out and get your copy today. Or don't, the choice is yours. But until next time, keep on questing.